Hey guys, welcome to the second video of this C++ game development series where we are creating a snake game using C++ and SFML. In the last video, we saw how to set up the development environment for this project and we successfully created a simple GUI application. So in this video, we'll create two classes for state management of our game. But before that, let me explain what I mean by state. A state in our game will be any stage or piece of code which can process inputs to update itself and optionally load up a new state. Let's try to recall what all things happen when you start any game. The first thing that you might have seen is a splash screen showing logos from developers or publishers. We can say that this is the splash screen state because it gets displayed for some time, takes any key press as input and then loads up a new state. The next thing or state that you see is the main menu state. Here you will find some of the common options like start new game, continue, options and exit. Selecting any one of the options will again load up a new state. Like if you select the start option, the actual gameplay state will get loaded and you will be able to play the game. And at last, when certain conditions are met, a game over state will start, showing whether we won or lost and maybe also the final score. So this is the general idea about states. So we will create a common abstract base class for all such states which will define what a state can actually do. Also, as states operate much like a stack data structure, we will create a state manager class which will internally manage a stack of states. It will allow us to push, pop and replace states. So let's get started. For state class, we only need a header file because it is a pure abstract class. So I'll create a new header file by right clicking the include folder and selecting new file. Let's name this as state.hpp. Inside this file, the first thing that we want to do is write the pragma once statement. This will make sure that the header only gets included once in any source file. Next, I'll create a new namespace and name it engine. Basically, everything under this namespace is something that can be reused for any other game. It is not specific to this snake game, kind of like a ultra lightweight game engine. Inside this, I'll create a class called state. As the implementation of constructor and destructor will be blank, we don't need it outside the class. Also, there will be no private member, so let's remove that as well. I'll make the destructor virtual because we will be inheriting from this class. Always remember to do this, otherwise destruction of objects of derived classes will not happen properly. Next, I'll create an init method and it also needs to be virtual. And definition for this method will have to be provided by derived classes. Basically, all initial setup of a state will happen in this method like setting up the sprites, texts and their positions. Next, I'll create process input method. As the name suggests, this will handle the events like key press and mouse clicks. This will also be a pure virtual method. Then we need an update method which will react to the inputs handled in process input and will make changes in the state like recalculating the position of sprites and texts. Update will also need an argument which will be of type SF time. Let me add the header for it first. It is located under the system module. Let's name this parameter as delta time. So basically this will be the elapsed time since the last update call. This is required for making sure that our game runs at the same FPS on every machine. You will understand this more clearly when we will create the snake class and try to move it. But to explain it in short, update gets called multiple times inside an infinite while loop. And depending on how fast or slow your machine is, the update done per second will vary, resulting in the game running fast on some machines and slow on the other. Next, we need a virtual method called draw, which will draw all the sprites and text of the state on the rendering window. So these are the four methods that are absolutely necessary for every state. There are two more methods which are required only for some of the states and they are pause and start. These methods will help to pause and start a state. For example, when you pause a game, the game world remains visible to you, but a transparent layer is placed on top of it which has the pause menu, and it blocks any input to the game world. As these methods are optional, I'll give them a blank implementation. And this completes our state class. Next, we need to create the state manager class. For this, I'll use the easy C++ extension by pressing Ctrl Shift P and then searching for create new class. This will ask you with some options. I'll select constructor and then it will ask for the name of the class. I'll name it state man. 
and press enter. This will automatically create a header file under the includes and a source file under src. Here it is showing an error for the header include. If you also get this error, just put your cursor on the error line and press control dot. This will bring up some options to fix this problem. The first one says add to include path. So this will let VS code know that it should look for headers under include folder. Selecting that option, it will open the C++ configurations and if you look at the include path section, you will see that the include path got added automatically. Close this window and the error should be resolved now. Let's go to the stateman.hpp and move this class inside the engine namespace. Now we can start adding the private members for this class. First, we will need a stack to store the states. For this, I'll use the std stack from standard C++ library. Let's include the stack header for this. I'll name the member as m underscore state stack and it will store unique pointers to state object. To use unique pointers, we will need memory header and for state, we will need state.hpp. Next, we need an unique pointer which will store the new state being added to the stack. This is required because we don't want to push a new state on the stack while other state is executing its update method. Instead, we will store the new state in this member and will add it to the stack only after the update cycle of current state completes. Now let's add the public methods for this class. First one will be add. This method will take two parameters. First one will be a unique pointer to state object being added and the second parameter will be a boolean to control whether we want to simply add a new state or do we want to replace the current one with the new one. Default value for this will be false as most of the time we will just want to push a new state on the stack. Next method that I'll create is pop current. This will remove the current state from state stack. And next method that we need is process state change. Basically this is the place where state stack will actually be modified. Add and pop current will just store the intent that we want to add or remove a state. Actual modification to the stacks will only happen inside process state change. And at last, we need a method which will return an unique pointer to current state object by reference. I'll name this as get current. So let's copy these four methods and go to the CPP file to define them. But first, let's add the engine namespace for the constructor and destructor. Let's do the same thing for all the four methods too. And I forgot to add three boolean members in the header file. These will be m underscore add, m underscore replace and m underscore remove. Basically these members will be modified by add and pop current methods. And depending on their values, the process state change will make modifications to the state stack. So let's go back to the CPP file and initialize all the three boolean members with false at the construction. Now let's start defining the four methods. Inside add, first thing I'll do is set m underscore add to true. Next, let's store the state being added in m underscore new state. As these are unique pointers, we will have to use std move to transfer the ownership from to add to m underscore new state. And last thing to do in this method is to update m underscore replace with the replace variable. And we don't need to specify the default value here, so I'll remove that. Next. Moving to the pop current method, I'll just set m underscore remove to true here. Next is process state change. But before that, let's complete the get current method because it is also very simple. We just have to return the state which is at the top of the stack. This can be done by returning m underscore state stack dot top. And now we can start implementing process state change. So first I'll handle remove. For this, let's check if m underscore remove is true. And also let's make sure that the state stack is not empty because there should be something in the stack to remove. Inside this, I can call pop on the state stack. After the current state has been popped, we will have to call start method on the next state if there is any so that it can start handling inputs. For this, again I'll check if stack is empty or not and if it is not, then I'll call start method on the top state. And the last thing that I'll do here is I'll reset the m underscore remove to false else it will keep on removing all the states from the stack. After processing remove, next, I'll check if m underscore add is true. Inside this, I'll first check if m underscore replace is true, because if it is true, we will have to pop the current state before adding the new one. Again here, I'll make sure that there is something to pop. After processing replace, and before adding the new state, I'll call pause on the current state. 
for this again make sure that stack is not empty after the last pop call after pausing the current state i can finally push the new state on the stack and similar to what i did for remove i'll also reset m underscore replace and m underscore add to false after their respective operations have been performed this concludes the state and state manager classes if you have missed something you can download the entire source code from the github repository for this project link for which is in the description in the next video we'll create the asset manager class which will store all the textures and fonts required for our game so hope to see you in the next video